Phone specs don't get much better than this. The Snapdragon 888 processor, a 6.8 inch AMOLED display, a beastly hybrid cooling system, 5G networking, 64 megapixel triple camera setup, and the cherry on top, a 165 hertz refresh rate, the highest on any smartphone ever. Introducing the ZTE Red Magic 6, the most overpowered phone you've never heard of. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today we're reviewing this absolute monster of a phone, one that will only cost you $600. When it comes to the display and the refresh rate, this phone has every other phone beat at 165 hertz. There are 140 hertz phones, 120 is pretty common nowadays, but 165 is just ridiculous. Now yes, once you get to 120, you're gonna get diminishing returns as you push things further, but 165 is still objectively better when it comes to a smooth, potentially competitive experience if you're gonna be using this phone for what it's really marketed towards gaming. Nubia's Red Magic line of phones has been around for a while and have been some of the best budget gaming options out there, competing spec-wise with the ROG phone and others while still being cheaper. Although it's worth noting that right now the Xiaomi Black Shark 4 is on the way at $500 with 144Hz and a couple advantages, but it does only have the Snapdragon 870 processor versus the 888. And then there's the Lenovo Legion phone that was just announced. It's uh, closer to $1,000, but it looks pretty awesome. And Lenovo's a great brand, so there's some advantages there to that phone. I'll let you look into it if you're curious, but regardless of how cool it looks, it is still quite a bit more expensive. And looking at what Nubia has done here with the Red Magic 6, hardware-wise, this phone is at an insane value, and there's absolutely no denying that. So why have you probably never heard of it, or even Nubia at all? Well, this phone is straight out of China, without the brand recognition of Huawei. You probably won't see the biggest YouTubers do video on it, except to maybe pure talk about the technical achievement with the refresh rate, but I want to talk about how this phone truly manages to stand out in a saturated smartphone market, and whether or not it's actually worth buying, because by the numbers and $600 price point, in theory, it really should be a no-brainer for those looking for a great new phone, especially if you plan to play a lot of mobile games. Nubia did reach out and send this phone to me for review purposes, by the way, so this video is not sponsored, but I also didn't buy it myself. Just want to make that known. I've had it for a few weeks now, and the pre-orders began on April 9th, with the phone officially launching on the 15th. Alright, so what's the catch here? $600 for this? Well, the Red Magic is a Chinese smartphone, which means awkward software, some strange English translations here and there, and a lot of compromises in many minor areas that just kind of add up. So let's start this review off with the design, certainly its boldest feature. We've got a glass front and back, with that back having a wild look to it that just screams to the world that you truly are an epic gamer. That logo lights up with RGB, because why not? Along with those two little strips by the logos, and the whole crisscross red and black design is certainly something. The color is called Eclipse Black, and at the moment it's the only one available, with there also being a Red Magic 6 Pro colored in a so-called Moon Silver. They didn't send me the Pro, but there's really not a ton of differences to speak of. It's got 16 gigs of RAM as opposed to the 12, as well as 256 gigs of storage as opposed to 128 here. The glossy glass on the back is a fingerprint magnet and a half, which isn't uncommon, and there's a significant curvature with a very, very minor camera bump to host that 64 megapixel camera setup. That 10 cent logo on the side here is only on the Chinese versions. The global models won't have that uh, because I received mine early. It's the Chinese version, so. The sides are a flat aluminum that feel cold to the touch, and we have a few different features to note. We have a couple touch bumpers here for gaming, much like an actual controller. We have a genuine fan grill here. The cooling system on here is ridiculous, and I doubt there's any game you could play to get this thing even somewhat warm. It's seriously nuts. It's also very loud. Uh, when you have the fans fully running. We have a headphone jack, which is a fantastic inclusion, a USB-C for charging, and there's this red switch, which you might expect to be a do not disturb slider, but it's not. Sliding it actually puts us into what I would like to call epic gamer mode, where we have a cool animation and UI to look through our games and have direct control over the hardware and the temperatures. You're gonna wanna turn this on before playing your favorite game, and all in all, it's a pretty complete experience from what I've seen, so that's awesome. But back to the design, obviously this phone 
isn't going to be water resistant whatsoever, and that should not be a surprise. The glass back is a bit slippery, and I'm not really a fan of the feel. I would have liked to see frosted glass, as I think that would offer a much better grip, which is of course kind of important when you're playing games. Turning to the front, we have the massive and very tall 6.8 inch AMOLED display, which pulls off an aspect ratio of 20 by 9 and a resolution of 1080 by 2400. So yes, the resolution is only 1080p, but it has a pixel density of 387 pixels per inch, which is by no means bad, and I'd say it's a worthwhile sacrifice for such a great refresh rate, even if the difference from 120 hertz to this is nowhere near what 60 to 120 is, or even 90 to 120. But it's definitely better, and there's no denying that. This phone just feels absurdly fast. I'm confident calling this the world's fastest smartphone, because that refresh rate combined with the top of the line specs give you a blazing fast legless experience, and you do have the choice of choosing your frame rate. You don't have to do 165 hertz at all times. You can kick that down a bit if you'd like to save some battery life. Surrounding that huge display, we've got some top and bottom bezels, although no notch or hole punch cutout, which uh, aesthetically I appreciate. You've got the front speaker cut out on the top, and the speakers here are really not great, honestly. They're quite tinny, and I'd definitely be wanting to use that headphone jack for gaming. There's a fingerprint sensor under the display, and I do think it's better than last year, but it's not fantastic. It does the job, and I didn't have any instances where I got especially annoyed with it. Again, that 165 hertz, man, this the software experience is just so fast, but the refresh rate does mean a bit of a battery drain, assuming you're using it to its full potential, but luckily we have a massive 5050 milliamp hour battery. This thing should be able to handle even pretty intensive gaming sessions for a decent amount of time. The screen gets bright enough, and all in all, it looks pretty good, not even close to on par with an iPhone or Samsung phone, but I wouldn't expect that. At $600, I'd say it's about what you would want for quality. For tech specs, that Snapdragon 888 is top of the line, and the 12 gigs of RAM is extremely overkill. I think the 128 gigabytes of storage, ironically enough, might be the biggest bottleneck, as there's no SD card slot, but it's still quite a bit of space, and it's unlikely you'll be taking too many photos, so you have tons of room for games. But uh, why wouldn't you be taking many photos? Well, the camera might be 64 megapixels, but it's really darn mediocre. This is unfortunately par for the course with most Chinese smartphones, a super high megapixel count to impress you, along with a couple extra lenses for good measure, only for the results to be quite disappointing. And I mean, it can take a nice photo, but it often lacks detail and the clarity you would find in another phone, even around the same price point. You're not buying the Red Magic for the camera, but it is definitely a downside. Those two extra lenses are also more for show than anything else. One is a pretty bad 8 megapixel ultra wide, and the other is a 2 megapixel macro lens because I don't even know. Honestly, who is asking for macro lenses on these budget phones? The selfie camera on the front is 8 megapixels, and it's not great, but it does the job. All in all, that's really what I would say about the camera. It does do the job, but it's certainly not for the kind of person who wants to take a lot of photos, so straight up avoid it if that's you. Look for an iPhone or maybe a Pixel. That's going to do you a lot better. The value of the Red Magic is in the base hardware, and the compromises surrounding it definitely add up, but that initial value with the display and crazy performance, I believe still manages to overrule things, mostly. Haptics are bad. You're missing quality of life features like water resistance and wireless charging. And the software is about what you would expect from a foreign phone of this nature, in that there's some strange quirks and bad translations. For example, when adding a game to the Epic Gamer Mode, it says remove and join, not, you know, add or whatever. I think if these companies would actually get a native English speaker on the team, a lot of these minor annoyances could easily be rectified. And I will say, I noticed a few bigger mistakes early on when I first got the phone, but some of those have actually been fixed through a couple updates, so that's pretty nice. But updates, that's another major downside of this phone. It runs Android 11, and you shouldn't expect any other major software updates ever. There will be some minor ones and security improvements, but the Red Magic 5G from a year ago is still stuck on Android 10, so yeah. There's probably some runarounds and whatnot people will figure out, but it's an unfortunate aspect of these types of phones that is much too prevalent from tech coming straight out of China. There's a real stigma surrounding them, and I wish that wasn't the case, but there is a reason for it. That being said, the base software here is actually not too bad. The skin is very plain, there's very little bloatware, and the epic gamer mode is quite cool and useful. Going into that and starting up a game, you have a fair few customizable options, such as having a frame counter, choosing how performance is focused, your cooling options, so on and so forth. Not all games will do 165 hertz, it's a bit hit and miss. For example, the new Crash Bandicoot app only does 60, but Subway Surfers has an uncapped frame rate, which is great, and is the smoothest I've ever played this game for sure. I remember playing a lot of it when I was quite a bit younger, 
sure. I'm sure this phone would have blown my mind in comparison to the iPhone 4 I had back in those days. Uh, but obviously Subway Surfers isn't the game you're probably going to be wanting to play with this thing. For a lot of competitive titles such as Call of Duty or Fortnite, you should be able to have a higher frame rate. All in all, this phone is worth $600. It is. The value is there. And even with the downsides, the absolute sheer overkill in the specs make up for it, but only for a very specific kind of person. For gamers, sure, but I still find it hard to believe there are that many dedicated mobile gamers out there. Yes, games like Fortnite are the full game, and you can compete with anyone, even people playing on their PCs, and you're definitely going to do better with the game on here than you would with your average 60 hertz phone. But wouldn't most still rather play on their console on their big TV, or if they're dedicated enough on like a gaming PC? Perhaps I'm just playing wrong, and I'll admit there has to be a group that appreciates phones like this, otherwise, you know, these phones wouldn't exist in the first place. And if that's you, this is a pretty great buy. And I'll also concede I'm looking at this from a North American bubble. Different parts of the world are gonna be different. And the other kind of person this phone is for is the very uh, tech savvy among us, those willing to ignore the compromises made in order to get that pure power, even if it means a lack of software updates in the future, unless, again, you know, some get arounds are found to uh, update it anyways. But for everyone else, I think it's still a very good idea to stick with the more mainstream options within the Western world, like an iPhone 11, OnePlus, or a Samsung phone. There are other high refresh rate displays, at least on the Android side, and if you're getting 120 hertz, you're doing good enough. 165 is great, but it's not the improvement one might expect or hope for. Next year, if we get 240 hertz, that could be a completely different story, so we're gonna have to wait and see what happens. In the very least, though, I do have to applaud Nubia for continuing to push the limits of mobile technology. I'm very excited to see what comes next, even if it's hard for me to recommend the Red Magic 6. It's still a super cool phone, and I had a lot of fun reviewing it. So big thanks to Nubia for sending it out to me. And if you're interested, I will have a link to the page in the description below. It's not an affiliate link, so if you buy it, you're not giving me any money. But uh, yeah, it'll be there if you want to take a closer look. And with that, I think I'm right about done here. Would any of you be actually interested in a gaming phone like this, or the Asus ROG, or the Legion, or something like that? Make sure you let me know in the comments down below, and definitely if you already own one. If you found this video interesting or even helpful, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you'd like to for whatever reason. And with that all being said, thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech and I will see you all next time.